The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14. Visit element14.com forward slash TBHS to learn how a purchase of $100 or more can get you a free subscription to Make Magazine while supplies last. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. Got an idea you'd like to see built? Why not send it to the Ben Heck Show? Hello, and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. In this episode, we're going to try and build a super fast can cooler. To accomplish this, we'll use a cooling device called a Peltier. These work by passing a current through two different types of metal. Heat is absorbed at one junction, the cold side, and then passed through to the other junction, the hot side. This is known as the Peltier effect. By pulling heat away from the hot side, we can keep the other side very cold, which will allow us to chill objects with it, such as a can of pop or soda, depending on your vernacular and location. Let's get started. You know, I was just thinking, making this automatic can cooler might waste a lot of electricity, so we should probably keep an eye on how much we're using during this episode. Let's get started. So when I heard of the project Superfast Can Cooler, the first thing that I thought of using was a Peltier module. Now what this does is it basically takes heat from one side and blows it out the other. So you can cool things here or heat them here, but usually it's used for cooling. All right, so this really isn't hooked up very well, but just enough to show us what it's gonna do. I put the Peltier on this big heat sink. This is gonna be the cold side. So right now we're at 64. So let's fire it up and see what we get. Look at that sucker drop. Here's an example workflow, so to speak. You've got the object you want cooled here, and you've got some sort of medium that connects to it. And probably gonna have a heat sink shaped like a can, but for now, this. So the object you want cool is here. So what happens is the Peltier sucks the heat this way. So it goes here, here, and then this blows the heat away. So it's kind of like a heat tunnel. So what I'm going to do next, as a cheapy little experiment, is hook up some of these heat sinks together using some JB Weld since I'm out of <laughs> Arctic Silver. And uh, we'll see if we can use it to rapidly cool down some water and that will sort of prove our concept. And then from there we'll work on how to design and control a can cooling system. And of course I'm going to use way more than I should, just like sugar and salt. Just a spoonful of sugar, something, something. So now the JB Weld is doing its thing. It's actually JB Quick, so only, I only have to stand here for like six minutes. Now it's obviously been on there long enough. So the next thing to do is attach this fan. So this is basically how it's gonna be, is like this. Look ma, no hands. So the basic idea is this will just kind of snap over these pins and then the fan will bolt to that. That way it's all one module. Okay, now I just need something that I can set this in that holds water so I can try cooling the water. Allison, do you have any ideas? Well, if you go to Arby's for lunch, maybe you can grab a cup or something from there. Ah. Oh, when you get the roast beef sandwich to go, it comes in a plastic thing that opens up. We could put, put water in that and then set that in it. Okay, I'm back from Arby's. We're gonna do a very scientific experiment. We have this Arby's tray, which will hold some water. And we will put a precise amount, obviously in both, of hot water. And then what we'll do is we'll stick one onto the cooling device and the other one we'll just leave open and see how rapidly it changes. This is not really as dangerous as it looks. Okay, you can definitely see a difference already in the water temperature. Obviously there's not a whole heck of a lot of surface area on this heat sink to 
pull it out of the water, but after about two minutes, it is doing a difference. Okay, so the next thing we need to think about is how to control the temperature of the can cooler. You'll stick a can in and then it'll activate and it will cool it until it reaches a certain temperature. So what we're working with here, we have an Arduino Nano uh, system. As you can see, it's pretty small. You can fit it into a socket fairly easily. And then we have two other components on the board. We have a temperature sensor, which uses an I squared C bus, which is basically a two wire data transfer bus. You can see right there. And then we have a MOSFET. MOSFET is a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. And what this will do is we can pass the high current Peltier voltage through this and it can be activated by the nano. So the nano will send five volts in this line which will allow the current, the high current, to go and power the Peltier. And then once it senses that the can is cold enough, it will deactivate the MOSFET and beep or something. So we've got these numbers scrolling by and they're not changing. So I'm wondering if that is actually the temperature or if I'm reading the wrong register. I mean, we're definitely getting data off of the little device, but is it the right data? So let's use this blowtorch. Oh, there it goes. Look at it go. Yeah. All right. So we have interface the temperature sensor with the Arduino, and now we can use it to control our Peltier. So this is room temperature or shop temperature Pepsi. So we're gonna see what temperature it is, program that into the Arduino as a starting point, and then give it a target temperature such as 10 degrees cooler, and then make the Arduino shut itself off once this reaches that temperature. We've got the code in the Arduino so we can unplug it from the computer. Remember, it has its own non-volatile RAM, so it'll remember the program basically forever until you update it again. So as long as this sensor is above 45 degrees Fahrenheit, this MOSFET is going to be active, allowing this thing to cool it off. So what our program is going to do is, if this sensor is above 50 degrees, it will activate the Peltier and the fan via this MOSFET, and you'll know it's activated because this LED will be on. Once this temperature goes below 50 degrees, it will turn off the MOSFET, turning off the Peltier and the fan. So right now, for instance, it's going to be warm enough, and so this stuff activates. So I'll just rapidly cool it here using some handy Wisconsin snow. Okay, you see it turned off. So this shows that once the liquid or whatever cools off to a certain, woo, low enough temperature, <laughs> it will uh, turn off the circuit. Now, let no Pepsi go to waste. Yeah, hmm, delicious. So we've shown how we can use a Peltier to cool something. And we've also shown how a microprocessor, such as the Arduino, can be used to control that cooling using a temperature sensor and a MOSFET to start it and stop it. In the next section, we'll build the actual physical can cooler itself and make it look like some sort of product. Being able to tell the temperature of something without actually touching it is a very useful thing to have. I mean, your fingers are great and all, but they won't give you very accurate reading. High quality Fluke infrared thermometers, like this one, can be purchased for around $100 and are very useful in the shop, kitchen, or garage. That steak is that temperature. My engine block is that temperature. I'm that temperature. One thing to note though, sometimes these thermometers aren't very accurate when you use them on bright, shiny objects, as we saw in the episode when I attempted to measure the heat sink we built. Testing temperature as you work on a project is a good idea because if you need to add any heat sinks or change the design in any way, you can do it before you glue anything together or close it up permanently. If you're not sure if an object is too hot to handle, pull out your Fluke 62. I'm, you can handle me. This CNC machine is now the ultimate power in the universe. I suggest we use it for pinball. There will be no one to stop us this time. I will make the most powerful pinball machine ever. I will even learn to keep sawing us from dying. Do what must be done. Whom do you serve? Team Hack and Dawn. Let's test this temporary flipper circuit. Jones is going to simulate pushing the button on the cabinet. All right, so then we get an LED lit up. Now he's going to simulate the end of stroke switch. 
Okay, so what happens is when you first push the button, you use the high power coil to like, bam, hit the ball. Once the ball is up, it hits the end of stroke switch so that it knows the flipper's all the way up. And then it switches to a lower power circuit. Okay, so we're gonna do our test here. We have a 50 volt power supply, which goes into the solenoids and the solenoids drain into these MOSFETs. So you saw the LEDs lighting up before. So what happens basically is this will switch on the MOSFETs and allow certain circuits of the solenoids to drain the ground and that will activate the solenoids. So let's use this multimeter. We'll see how much amperage it draws. It's running the flipper directly off the 50 volt power supply. Then we can see what the peak current is and then we can try with the MOSFET. It's possible the MOSFETs are insufficient for the amount of power we need. Okay, ready? 4.1 amps. Okay, so we're gonna try direct driving these, I'm not even using the MOSFETs to see if that's our problem. Okay, ready? Yep. Release! Mm, that seemed pretty powerful. All right, so I've hooked up this really simple MOSFET circuit so we can see if it's the MOSFETs or the programming, or we're basically simplifying it to see where the problem is. We've got the high current of the flipper going into our cheapy MOSFET, going to ground. Okay, Mike, activate the high voltage power supply. Ah, well, don't worry. Next time on Pinball Wars, we're gonna really get some stuff done. So now it's time to actually build the physical can cooling unit itself. We've already demonstrated how it works, but now we're gonna see and see some actual parts. Okay, the aluminum is all milled and there's all these spare chips, but what should I do with them? The machine's very handy, but there's still a lot of work you gotta do by hand, so, yeah. I should have thought of this before I routed out the sheet. Uh, you know, breaking up the surface so we can glue them together better. Oh well, almost done. Gotta wash them off because uh, all of the oil and the, you know, microscopic or very hard to see sanded aluminum bits won't help the glue stick. So what we're gonna do next is build this heat sink and I'm going to glue these pieces together and stack them up basically so they go around the can. And the bottom pieces have screw holes because they're going to mount to the rest of our mechanism for its slide. All right, so there's our pieces. What do you get for the engineer in your life who has everything? How about an aluminum can koozie? So the next thing we need to do is make a frame to enclose it. So what we have here is a side drawing representation of how it's going to work. I'm going to get some large heat sinks off Tiger Direct, basically off the shelf CPU heat sinks because those can suck a lot of heat, far more than we need them to. They're gonna go on either side. This square here represents the Peltier unit and how it contacts with the um, aluminum. So now we're gonna make the uh, frame which will hold the heat sinks. This will be a welcome break for the machine after all that aluminum it routed. All right, so we've routed out the pieces. Let me just kind of show you how it's gonna go together. This part here slides back and forth and that connects to that. This part doesn't move, the can sits on it. And these things right here are where the heat sink base is. Okay, so before we attach this heat sink to the sliding platform, I'm going to use my tap to uh, put screw threads on the inside of these holes. Okay, right, so it's there, it's there. I think I should be able to drill some holes in this and make it match this pattern. That should work. And then the Peltier is almost exactly the right size to fit in here. So I could actually use Arctic Silver instead of <laughs> JB Weld and then fit this in here and then screw this in so this would be held on by the compression of the screws. So we're gonna put some threads in here too so we can tighten the heat sink against it and hold the Peltier. All right, I'm gonna put on the Arctic Silver. 
It didn't quite fit. All right, so now we're gonna screw the heat sink in place. You know what this could also do on those hot summer days? Just hook it up to your arm and you know, cool off your entire bloodstream in minutes. Okay, I'm now going to try switching this on. We have one of the units made, so basically we'll need two of these total, but the basic idea is this should become very cold and all the heat will be sucked through this heat sink, through the heat pipes, and blown out this way. Here we go. Okay, we're reading 57 degrees, but that can't be right because it's much colder than that. I think it's because the IR doesn't really work in this aluminum. But as you see, we're actually getting condensation now on it, so we're definitely taking a lot of heat out. All right, so we've got one of these assemblies done, so I'm gonna bolt it onto the frame here. So this one will be stationary, and the other side of it will come in and clamp to this. I was worried there wouldn't be much support here for the uh, heat sink, but it appears to you know, stand just fine, so I think I'll just leave it like this. Let me just show you how this is gonna work. And then another one of these is gonna be here, so the can's gonna be hit on both angles. Hi, Ben. Well, this is my dear baby sister, Karee. I was wondering, I'm really thirsty, could I get a pop? Well, I'd love to help you, but the only one I have is this lukewarm <sighs> one that's in the microwave. Uh, well, I'd kind of like something cold. This little puppy here will make all your dreams come true. Can't wait. You just put the pop here. Okay. Squeeze this side on, and it will be encapsulated in solid aluminum and cold before you know it. Wonderful. So yeah, it uses Peltiers, which um, use the Peltier effect, yeah. okay. where dissimilar metal um, causes you know cold to happen, and yeah. then the custom milled heat sink. Uh -huh. um, you got all this? Yeah. Yep. It pulls all the heat out of the can and blows it into the atmosphere, <laughs> so it doubles as a room heater. Yep. Here you go, a chilled can of soda. Thanks. It's about time. Oh, that was the coldest soda, best soda I've ever had in my life. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we'll be building a new version of the portable workbench you may have seen in past episodes, but this one's going to be better, faster, stronger. We'll see you then. The Ben Heck Show is made possible by our sponsors at Element 14. For more information on all my projects and for a list of all the parts I use today, visit element14.com. We'll see you next time.